I, uh, my name is uh, Hong Chin. I'm a faculty at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. Uh, so this uh, talk is about a project uh, I was fortunate to work on with uh, a large team of uh, colleagues uh, from uh, North Carolina a and uh, Spelman College, Catholic University of America. Uh, those are the uh, on paper, but in reality, there are many, many more uh, uh, collaboration. We probably have a, now more than a dozen uh, team uh, have, work, have been working on this. Uh, so this is a National Science Foundation supported uh, project. It's called the PIPP Phase One. Uh, my goal uh, is to develop an AI-based uh, framework to predict uh, and prevent future coronavirus pandemic. Uh, although we say it's coronavirus, uh, but uh, the model now has uh, proceeded to be generalizable to uh, presumably many other uh, viral pandemic. So, oops. Uh, my apologies. Uh, oh, okay, my fault. Uh, so this is the, uh, okay, it's automatic authority. My, my apologies. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is the kind of overview of we uh, proposed in the beginning, although uh, we, we have made a lot of modification right now. But here's a, uh, the idea is uh, still the same. So we uh, proposed how do we predict the uh, uh, virus and new virus uh, pandemic? Uh, so our idea is first we generate all the possible um, SARS-CoV acts from the readable uh, based on recombination patterns of habitat change. And then we predict those potential SARS-CoV acts. Now here's the challenge. It's easier to generate those uh, sequences, but how do we know which one actually will become virulent or transmit in a human population? That's really uh, 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 the key here. So we turn to uh, AI. So you may say AI is a black box. Well, uh, in this case, it's uh, probably also a blessing because we really don't know how a virus jump from host uh, from the animal reservoir to human have become virulent. So AI is a black box, but it's probably a great tool we can use, even though it may be a black box. So that's my ar argument here. So my apology, I have to block off because we are, uh, my university is applying for uh, patents based on the, the, the funding of this. So, uh, so the goal is here, we have an input sequences. Uh, this is just primary nucleotide sequences. Uh, from those sequence, we'll do feature engineering, generate some helpful features, and then we use the sequence feature to feed into an AI model. And based on our AI model, we'll predict the uh, uh, fitness. And we, uh, given the recent advance of AI, we can also use the uh, AlphaFold, molecular dynamic simulation, or even experimental methods to verify some candidate gene as a potential drivers for those virulence uh, change. And uh, given the AI model, we can also generalize this, uh, basically use transfer learning uh, from coronaviruses, presumably to other uh, viruses, such as influenza, HIV, uh, HPV, uh, there's many uh, viral variants. So <laughs> I'm not actually really not expert in, in biology. <laughs> I'm just computer science. Uh, so, the, the the challenge we are really dealing with, uh, my, my apology, it's automatically forwarding again. Uh, so <clears throat> the challenge is really to uh, predict uh, pathogenicity from sequences. And we can also find a potential rule and test the generability by transfer learning, predict the uh, viral uh, uh, future viruses. And the predicted outcome, it will be AI enabled the uh, early warning system. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, and we want to use AI to predict vaccine development. And given that we know how the uh, virulence variants change, so that's the uh, big picture of this. So, and here's some uh, uh, results we have uh, developed uh, or, or have uh, accomplished. And this is uh, estimation of the uh, viral 
uh, finish based on the information uh, that they don't have. This is actually for uh, Omicron subvariants. Uh, so and we can compare uh, the Omicron variants uh, using a method we develop a pairwise comparison. Then we can estimate the relative difference between those variants. And based on this data, we can uh, generate a, a so-called uh, viral fitness landscape. And for those who are uh, uh, aware of the evolution, in evolution, there's a so-called uh, fitness landscape. And there's really a lot of argument about that. But there's also a lot of theory based on the evolution landscape of fitness. And with the very, uh, 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 fitness landscape of uh, uh, potential virus, we could, uh, in theory, predict its evolution trajectory. Uh, so this is uh, this uh, a recurrent. Uh, we can we have a, a method can do this, and this is the uh, estimated result for the alpha, beta, delta, omicron subvariants uh, in the USA. Uh, we are also in the process of applying this to uh, influenza or smallpox. We don't have enough data for smallpox or uh, uh, other viruses, but influenza seems to be a promising. So. So those are, uh, 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 this is uh, 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 significant funding uh, of this uh, our current project. Uh, uh, here's some uh, more results uh, without uh, diverging uh, too much detail into the AI model we have developed. And there's really a lot of uh, parameters, uh, but the accuracy, uh, current model can achieve quite a high accuracy. Uh, well, of course, um, this is based on what we know. Uh, the challenge is really uh, about the unknown. Yeah. So, so even though we are predicting unknown, but the, the data is already known. So it, in machine learning, we basically split that into training and testing. So the, the challenging about predict unknown uh, is, is still a uh, uh, remain an open question currently, yeah. Uh, and, and some people may argue, uh, well, why do we have to do deep learning? There is a lot of statistical, genetic, genomics, quantitative tree. There are so many other methods and why we even have to turn into deep learning. And here we have some results to show deep learning at the minimal, it detects different signature from the standard genome-wide association study. So on the left is a result from our deep learning result. And this is actually uh, based on the WHO labeled uh, uh, virulent uh, uh, alpha, beta, delta, omicron, others. And we want to see what uh, signature in the SARS-CoV-2 genome are important to contribute to those uh, increase of virulence. And those, those high signals, you can see that at the end of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, genome. And around this region, uh, I'm highlighting trying to be between uh, 20,000 to 25,000, that's the spike gene, which uh, WHO and most of the immune response will be reacted to. And that's uh, based on the conventional knowledge that should be, uh, in fact, that's how WHO classify the SARS-CoV-2 variant. And, but surprisingly, uh, AI model uh, pick up those signals, but those are not the strongest signal and they pick up many other signal and some of the strongest signal are not there. And by using conventional uh, statistical genomic method like genome-wide associate, genome-wide association study. And that uh, still picked the spike gene as the stronger the signal. There are some other, but that not, not, not very strong. So in this case, the AI and the conventional statistical method pick, get, at, least, at the minimum, gave a different weight to those signals. So, and um, so this is, uh, it, uh, it's, 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 surprising and also uh, reassuring in a way. And so we, we picked the conventional wisdom, the spike team, but we also picked uh, some other signals um, which may or may not be uh, verified by the uh, experimental method. But how do we predict, uh, how do we verify this? Right? 
So, I mean, we use AI to predict many things, and we know AI can generate a lot of false predictions. So in this case, how do we verify it? Uh, so yes, that's a quite challenging. So we are trying, uh, at, in general, two different ways. One is to generate a model uh, experimental system to verify the uh, the findings. We we have a our team uh, using a in, uh, in uh, biological model. This is a Saccharomyces cerevisiae. We also have a, a cell line system to. Uh, uh, convert those genes into the uh, a live cell and measure their relative activities. Uh, and then we also have a, a computational person to perform molecular dynamics to simulate how those uh, uh, mutations affect candidate gene, uh, their activity. And in this case, it's SE2 and RBD, but we, we, we also have other candidate gene which predict it with uh in different region how they react with the human uh the genes potential targeting the human system uh human immune system so uh we also uh organize a uh, workshop and uh, expert panel to discuss how to uh design trustworthy ai uh to to promote uh social trust in the ai or equity in equ equitable ai and the COVID-19 has shown uh, there's high um, disparity in our current system. So we use AI to pr predict the uh, future pandemic. It can, it can easily amplify the hidden disparity in our current system or probably in our current data as well. So it, it's of, uh, we recognize this and we organize a quite diverse panel and including people from South Africa, uh, South Africa, I think uh, Kenya. Uh, there's a person from Europe, uh, Europe, and uh, uh, across the uh, uh, with with different background, like uh, lawyers, uh, physicians, policy uh, policymakers, uh, governmental uh, NIST, uh, governmental agencies, uh, from to have all kind of a. Uh, perspective how to promote AI, uh, how to promote trust in AI in uh, uh, historical marginalized communities. So, uh, so uh, we also emphasize a lot of workforce development uh, given, given our collaborator in a, a, a minority serving institution, including Spelman College, North Carolina and Catholic University of America, which contains a lot of uh, Hispanic uh, students uh, and uh, my home institution, U U University of Tennessee Chattanooga. We also collaborate with the hospital system, global source uh, for AI. Uh, and so lastly, thanks to ANSF, uh, UTC and the AI Tennessee Initiative uh, for, for the support of this work. Uh, and lastly, and um, I, I didn't put in the slides, uh, ISF has released call for the phase two application for national center, and that will be a, a, a scale probably a, a 10 times bigger, if not a hundred times bigger. So I, I'm looking for collaborators, especially with community engagement, public policy. I, I heard someone working on that. So <laughs> I wish to uh, uh, connect after this. Uh, so uh, I'll just stop here. Uh, thank you. Thank you.